Hello everyone, welcome to another Tech Tip Tuesday. For today's Tech Tip, we'll be focusing on the topic of alignments within the GOM Inspect inspection software. Alignments are an important element for any inspection project in GOM Inspect, and this is because they are the basis upon which your results are going to be calculated from. The alignment is what dictates the positional relationship between two or more data sets that you would like to compare. Therefore, different alignment strategies and options are going to give you a different outcome uh, with regards to your inspection results, which is why it's very important for us to understand the type of alignment we are using, as well as what sort of effect it is having on our results. So as you can see in this example, we have a CAD file that we've imported in, as well as a mesh file that was created from a scanned object of the same physical part. So we brought those two in together into the Garmin Spec workspace, and now we need to set up an initial alignment, which will allow us to create different sort of elements in terms of inspection checks that we can then use and even further on compare against different alignment strategies. So the initial alignment is simply used to bring the CAD and mesh data sets together so that we can proceed with our inspection project. If we take a look at the menu here, we can see that there's a number of different options available that we can use. However, the easiest and most commonly used initial alignment is the pre-alignment option here. So pre-alignment simply uses a global best fit method in order to bring the data sets together. So it takes into account every single feature and surface profile of the CAD and mesh file and brings them together in the best possible way. If we have a project with multiple data sets, we can select which ones we want to account for in this pre-alignment by using the menu here as well as the target element option. We can also set the search time for this alignment so that if it is unable to calculate using a shorter search time, we'd be able to go around that by selecting a longer search time and that way the software is able to calculate out the global best fit. Um, if it still has some issues figuring out the pre-alignment, we can also select a help point on the nominal as well as the actual to give the software a point of reference that it can use to help it align. So in this case, let's say we aren't able to calculate the pre-alignment. So I'm going to set a nominal point on this corner and do the same on the actual on roughly the same location. And that will give a point of reference that the software can use to calculate out the pre-alignment. So now that we have those together, we can see that the two data sets have been aligned in a global best fit. So now that we had the pre-alignment set up, we were able to proceed with the inspection project and we've created a surface comparison plot that showcases the deviations between the surfaces of the CAD and mesh files. So we notice here that on this M block, there's significantly higher deviations. And this M block is actually a piece that's able to be inserted in and out of the actual block. So this raises a question as to whether the deviations are being caused by improper form or improper fit. So form would refer to the actual geometry of the part. So whether the M block on the physical part is different than that of the CAD M block, or improper fit might also play a part in the sense that it was inserted incorrectly on the physical part, therefore causing the deviation in the GOM software. So we can use an alignment technique to check whether it's a result of form or fit. And the way we're going to do this is by using something called a local best fit alignment. So to do this, we're first going to select the mesh to be exclusively visible. And we simply have to select the region that we want to only focus on for this alignment. So that would, that would be the M in this case. So we're going to select the region here and then deselect the regions we don't want like this face here. So to do that, let's switch to another view and use the deselect option to deselect that portion. So now we have only the M selected on our mesh. So this will allow us to then go ahead with the local best fit and the software will calculate a new best fit alignment using the specified region we've selected. So now if we click OK and take a look at the surface comparison plot, you will notice quite a bit of a difference. So now we see that the M block no longer has those significantly high deviations. Um, it looks pretty good in a color sense. And this gives us the conclusion 
that the deviations we saw earlier were simply a result of improper fit as opposed to the actual shape of the M block. So we've taken a look at local best fit. Now let's take a look at some other main alignment options that we can use in the software. So one of them is the RPS or reference point system alignment, and that uses actual points that you can create either directly in Gaum Inspect or ones that you brought in from an external source to use as the zero points upon which the part will be clamped down and used as the basis for the alignment. So to do this, I'm going to import in a set of reference points that were brought in from an external source, add it to the part, and now we see that we have some surface points that are present on the part here. So all we have to do is now apply a measuring principle to give it respective points on the actual element. And now all we have to do is select the surface points, go to our RPS alignment option, and select this option to add all of those elements, and now we see that each of those six points has been added in and all we have to do is specify the direction here of those points. So that's already been pre-selected for us uh, given the labels here. And now if we just turn these visible you'll see those points here and those are going to be the points upon which there will be zero deviation. So now let's click OK. And so we see now we're in our RPS alignment and let's check our surface comparison plot see what it looks like in this alignment and we see that we have yet again another sort of different result as a result of a different alignment so there are other alignment methods available in the software however for the sake of time we're only going to be showcasing the three we've covered so far please stay tuned for more additional information on the GOM software and hardware and as always thank you for your time and we'll see you on the next tech tip